Hello everyone, welcome back to LucyCast. And today we're going to talk about all things whiskey. And to help us in this delicious conversation, we have tonight the Whiskey Brothers. Chris Gordman and Eric Gordman. So, hi boys. Hi. hi. How are we doing tonight? Good, how are you? Welcome to my podcast. Thank, Thank you, you for coming, I appreciate it. Thank you. I was excited when I, you know, I was excited about tonight's conversation because what is not to like today, right? What is not to, what, what's not to love about this? Uh, That's I don't how know. I feel. That... Delicious whiskey, some delicious food, and the best team in the world. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, tell, tell me a little bit about you. Tell well, us about you. As you said, my name is Chris Gordman. Um, <clears throat> and what do you do? I work for a uh, wine and spirits importer and distributor. Uh, out of New Jersey, here in New Jersey, um, and I enjoy whiskey. Very good. That's mainly what I do. Delicious. How about you, Eric? Well, I manage a retail mattress and furniture store in northern New Jersey, and I am a whiskey enthusiast. Very good. Fantastic. So, tell us about, a little bit about your world. Like, what is what brought you guys, what made you choose whiskey? Like, what is it about that you like? Um, I think... Um, it was really just a natural progression of um, drinking alcohol, enjoying alcohol. Um, like a lot of people, uh, I started out uh, drinking things like vodka because it's easily mixable. And um, But as my tastes changed and they grew, um, I gravitated more towards whiskey. Um, and... You know, initially it was like a shot and a beer kind of thing, but eventually you get, you know, more of a taste for it and start to explore what those tastes are within the world of whiskey, and here I am. Very good. How about you, Eric? I'd say my, <clears throat> my journey is very similar. Um, I will say that one of my first experiences with alcohol as a teenager was actually whiskey, um, Irish whiskey, St. Patrick's Day, um, around our house was important, so... And there was always a little bush mills hanging around. And, you know, kids want to know what the parents are, ta are doing. And dad was never shy about allowing us to have an Irish coffee. Um, but, but actually tasting the whiskey by itself in its natural state was sort of a, a revelation. Um, and then I went back to doing what most young people do. And like my brother stated, I drank, drank vodka and went with things that were easily mixable, things that, you know, you think you're going to hide from somebody, you know. <laughs> and uh, as my palate developed and I started, you know, ran through the vodka and then started, you know, tasting different things, you know, um, I started drinking seven and seven. So there, there's, there's some whiskey introduced right back into my, right back into my life. Um, and that just kind of went forward and forward and, until I started drinking my bourbon neat, basically. I mean, like you, like you see here, that's basically how I drink my bourbon. I, 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 I mix some of my whiskeys, but, but my bourbon, I drink this way. And you prefer a bourbon? <clears throat> I do most of the time, although I love a good Irish whiskey. Um, and good whiskey is good whiskey. So, I mean, I, I won't turn my nose up at anything. Right. Mm -hmm. What about you, Chris? <clears throat> um, ab about the same. Um, you know, as, as Eric was uh, saying, like he progressed through a couple different things and found his way back to whiskey. I think some of the progression for me was, uh, you know, like I said, the vodka, mixing the vodka because it's easily concealable to your palate. You're basically just tasting whatever you're mixing it with. <clears throat> Moving on to like rum and Coke, things like that. Uh, obviously things that are popular when you go out, you know, to the bars and stuff. Everybody's drinking these things, you know. Rum and Coke changed to, you know, uh, Jack and Coke, which is very popular in the, in the U.S., um, which, again, like I said, progress to you know shot in a beer you know jack and jack and a bud or whatever and that progress irish to coffees irish coffee irish same coffees. i was there enjoying the irish <laughs> coffees with them yeah and i um, know all about the irish coffees in that household and I, I think um uh what i would add to that is uh for a lot of people growing up if your parents have uh some sort of uh alcohol in the house they they may have uh, something sweet, you know, that eventually the kids might find and they taste it and they say, oh, this is delicious and they taste it more and more. One of those things is going to be uh, like Bailey's, 
which is a, a basically a whiskey based um, cream liqueur, you know, which is delicious to a young person. So, you know, eventually that moved you in that direction. Um, and uh, yeah, I. Do you prefer? Um, what do you prefer? What kind um, of what kind of whiskey? Uh, 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 just like my brother said, I don't turn my nose up to any whiskey. Um, my preference is definitely bourbon if I'm going to drink it neat. Um, but there are other whiskeys that I will mix. I'll still mix whiskey with uh, Coke. Um, I will mix some bourbons with Coke. It all depends on the level of uh, flavor. You know, if it's a if it's a basic bourbon. I'll mix it in with some Coke. If you know, if it's if it's more than that, I'm gonna drink it neat. You know? And what do you do when you see somebody mixing fantastic whiskey and bourbon with energy drinks, for example? Um, well, I try not to judge people too much, um, <laughs> especially uh, especially when you're talking about you know things as far as your palate go, uh, like whiskey. Um, one of the uh, rules I go by is it's the the best whiskey for you is the whiskey you like the way you like to drink it. So that could mean mixing it with uh, an energy drink or a soda. Um, but that's not my cup of tea, so I can't help sometimes but roll my eyes at like, <laughs> oh, what are you doing that for? <laughs> you know? And for the people watching, uh, somebody that is just curious about whiskey and about this universe, but I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about when you say you like your whiskey neat. What does that mean? Tell them. Oh, neat means the way we have it here, uh, nothing added, just straight in a glass. No mixers, no ice, no drops of water, nothing. Room temperature. Room, yeah, room temperature, you know, not chilled. Room temperature, yeah. yeah. Um, your comments about people mixing with Red Bull, well, I'm sorry, energy drinks, um, <laughs> reminded me of actually what, what conversation we were having not that long ago. I thought, I said, we were in a liquor store and I said, I touched a bottle of Jim Beam and I said, I mix this. I, I, this is an all-purpose bourbon as, yeah. far as, as far as I'm concerned. And that's, you know, I don't understand people necessarily mixing with energy drinks any more than I understand someone walking into a bar and ordering a mixed drink and spending their money and not, and just going with whatever's in the well. Right. You know, oh, a top shelf. You yeah, know. I mean, and, and and not even top shelf. But I'm not going to walk into my local, my, my local bar and just order a bourbon and Coke. I'll mm -hmm. order a Jim Beam and I'll order a Jim Beam and Coke. Mm -hmm. You know, or I'll order an old Granddad and Coke, or I'll order you know whatever they yeah. whatever if I see it on the shelf. You know, I'm right. not I'm not just going to let them pick up a well whiskey. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Introduce yeah. another idea. Yeah. Well, that that um, <clears throat> that leads me to a, a point that I like to talk about with people. Um, there are different regulations for what makes whiskey. Um, and some, uh, some products don't follow much of those regulations. Um, so it can only be called whiskey, a general whiskey, right? Um, and some of these products, if you read the label, they will say um, this amount of aged whiskey mixed with this amount of uh, grain neutral spirit, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is basically vodka, right. you know? So, um, and if you taste those whiskeys, of they actually, they add color and flavor also to mask the fact that it's, you know, 70% grain neutral spirit. Um, and if you taste those compared to even the basic, the most... Uh, base regulated bourbon you can taste a big difference in the flavor you know and those are the things that usually they're using as well well drinks in right, bars right, it's right. the cheapest thing that they could buy so, and you know? so it needs to ha to be added some mix to it in order to be, the, to be to taste good yeah. right right yeah. absolutely absolutely <clears throat> it's not something you're gonna take it home and just drink it oh I, I wouldn't it's Absolutely. not to say people don't, but You're right. uh, it's also not to say that you have to spend a lot of money to have a good shot of whiskey either. Oh, sure. I agree. I agree. But I was gonna say, I was gonna ask, 
when you we talk a lot about bourbon, you guys prefer bourbon. Mm -hmm. But tell um, for the people that are watching, right? What is the difference? Um, let's say you don't know anything about whiskey. You just learning about this. What is the difference? What is it called? Whiskey. Some things. Some things are called whiskey. Some liquor are called bourbon. And we also know there's scotch. Tell them what will be the main differences between those. Like what makes a whiskey a whiskey and a bourbon a bourbon? Like what is it not the same? So let's start probably with the difference between whiskey and bourbon. With whiskey and bourbon. Uh -huh. Bourbon being seeming to be the most regulated of the Amer of the American whiskeys. Um, so. I'm going to start with the things that I remember off the top of my head. Bourbon is supposed to be made in Bourbon County, Kentucky. I understand they've yes. gotten more lenient about labeling things bourbon over the years, but it technically is supposed to be made, it's supposed to be distilled in Bourbon County. Um, 51% corn or more? Yeah, it has to be at least 51%. It had the, the main <clears throat> grain of the, the mash bill, it was what they call it. Right. Has to be corn, but is it? Does it have to be made in Kentucky? No, not. Um, I, I am not positive that there was ever a specific regulation that said it had to be in Kentucky, um, but that was the no. That was at least the known uh, fact is that mm -hmm. this came from the accepted understanding. Yeah, the the accepted understanding, uh, and then when they eventually regulated. Um, at some point they said, no, it just needs to be made in the United States. Hey. Not anywhere in uh, the American continent. Can't be made in Canada. Can't be made in uh, um, Mexico. It can be made in Alaska, even though that's not part of the contiguous United States. It is a state, so it can be made in Alaska, but otherwise the United States. Um, so, number one, in order to be bourbon, it has to be Made in America. Right. That's that's correct. That is true. Number two, it must be aged in new charred oak barrels. Yes. I, I, it may even say uh, specifically American. American. American, right? American, 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 American white oak. American, 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 American white, white oak. oak. Yes. Yes. Um, because everything is whiskey, right? I'm saying, I'm asking this question. Sure. Because for the general public, right, we all work in the industry, so we know... We talk about whiskey all the time. We know a couple, uh, some differences, but people might not know, mm -hmm. right. right? So, made in America, white American oak, virgin barrels. What else? What did you, uh, and you say? Fifty-one percent minimum. Minimum, yeah, minimum fifty-one percent corn, like you said. Yeah, um, there, I don't believe there's any regulation on the secondary on the secondary grains. As a matter of fact, if you look at mash bills from different whiskeys and different bourbons, you see quite a, a variety of um, variation in how manufacturers are are, dist are are making their their distillate in terms of what goes into the what goes into the mash bill, um, but the vast majority of American whiskeys are well over seventy percent, oh, or seventy yeah. percent corn. So so yeah. you're getting a, so so almost any American whiskey, if it met the rest of the, the conditions, could be con could be considered a bourbon. Yeah. Right. Um, there of course there's there there's some that aren't. You know, some that don't don't meet that. Well, no, actually, they would. Even if they're in the '60s, they would meet. They would. They would meet that standard. So, mm -hmm. um, it's more about the the aging process. How, you know, what, how it has to be aged, and then how long it has to be aged. Which that one is escaping me. The length of time I, that bourbon needs to be aged. I believe it is. Uh, regulation says at least two years. Okay. Minimum two years. But most do it for four. Okay. Most age it for four. And the the reason they use corn is to make it sweeter, right? Yeah, it's the more the, corn, the sweeter the flavor. Yeah, so the the uh, depending on what grain you use, that's going or, or the amount of which grain you use is going to determine what the whiskey tastes like, even before it's aged, <clears throat> because the aging all the aging really does is uh, mellow the flavors and add some of the barrel flavors. Um, uh, so a lot of the flavor that you're getting is already from the grain that it's made with. Why are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> um, I know. So, I'm funny. so the corn, the corn is the sweetest of the grain, um, and we know they use rye. Uh, some uh, some American distillers even use uh, barley, which mm -hmm. is usually like a Scotch. 
would use a couple different kinds of barley. And when you see barley, um, it's generally a pretty low percentage. Yeah, I think they <coughs> it's malted I, barley probably. And, and the reason it, it, they use the malted barley is for to uh, trigger the process. Right. Right. Yeah, I believe so, so that's why usually that's why that's in there. But they'll use wheat. Um, I was and, gonna say, yeah. and so all these different grains give it different profiles. And like we said, the corn makes it sweet. Uh, rye will make it spicy. Wheat will make it soft right. on the palate. Um, so, and, and then, like I said, some of the other flavors come from the aging, but mainly those flavors are what's coming from the grain, the mash bill. We already, we can end the podcast already. That alone is already, <laughs> that alone, it's a class. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and what about the mash bill? You start, you talk about mash bill. What's a mash bill? So it's really the recipe that they're using to make the, to make the mash, which is what the alcohol is once it's fermented and before it's distilled. Yeah. That's, your, that's your combination of grain, water, sugar, and yeast. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I was very generic there in terms because the grain varies, the sugars can vary, you know, and, and different distillers like different yeasts. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if I can add, please. The, the, at, at this point, the reason uh, they're using the uh, wordage mash bill is because it needs to be presented to the government to show them that they're following the regulations. So... Otherwise, they would just call it a recipe, right? Right. right. So, that, right. that's that's, that's why point. some sometimes people they get caught up in the the name mash bill. What is mm -hmm. that like? It's it, it's a technical term, but it, that's why it's called a mash bill because, like he said, the the mash is the recipe the the recipe that you're making. The they call it a bill because here this is. You know, like a bill of lading, you know, in shipping or something. Right, you know, right. most Lays people have inside. most people have no idea how regulated the whiskey business is in oh, America. Yeah, it's a serious, serious business. Um, and if we can go into details another day, but it's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have the bonded uh, bourbon. What is it? Bonded and uh, bottled and bond. Bottled and bond. Yeah. Um, you. Some people just call it bonded, but the technical right. term is bottled and bond. Um, and like you said, it's that's even more regulated than just the regular bourbon. Um, and and it is uh, bourbon specifically <laughs> is the most regulated of all the whiskeys. But then you can go even further and, like you said, make it bottled and bond more than bourbon can be bottled in bond. That just means that those specific things, like if it's um, just, uh, say, what they would call a corn whiskey or uh, just a, some regular whiskey, a Tennessee whiskey, they have specific regulations for that. And the bottled in bond part means that it is un, under more strict um, scrutiny right. by the government. You, one of the main things is um, not only do you have to present the your specific uh, mash bill and and aging process when you're aging it, you actually have to put the barrels into a bonded warehouse, which means federally bonded, which means that the government oversees this warehouse. They come and they check it and make sure you're doing everything to the standards that you're supposed to be doing them to. You're not taking anything else in that warehouse or taking anything out of it until that whiskey is finished aging, you know? So like anything else, like anything else in this industry, right? We just want to get drink some whiskey. It should be as easy as that, but it isn't. No. <laughs> no. Not even close. <laughs> Especially in this business, it's not easy at all. Yeah, say like if the, if this whiskey is just a basic uh, four year aged, figure we are drinking something that was made at least four years ago, and whatever the process was to make it before they put it in the barrels to age it, some somebody crafted this whiskey a certain way to taste a certain way. And it could possibly be that they're not even here anymore. Right. I was going to say. That's a good point. You know? Yeah. I was going to say, how old is this one specifically? But yeah. um, when we talk about 18-year-old uh, whiskey or more, 25-year-old, yeah. yeah. you know, 
a lot of the times the person who crafted the uh, who mastered the the process to make that whiskey did it for year 30 years before that and then they came up with this recipe that's a, a successful recipe and now we put into age and by the time you're drinking they might not be here yeah no that's more. true yeah. that's true yeah. it's i mean it's an art form to distill um you know obviously once they have the art perfected they can scale it up to size right. that they need but the first person that worked on that recipe may never have seen a bottle make market. Yeah. It's they may never have tasted it. And it's generations, right? Yeah. Sometimes his father starts and then he got to a point and then now he passed, his son is making or his daughter. Mm -hmm. A lot of women now uh, making whiskey, a lot of women master distillers mm -hmm. uh, coming up, which is fantastic. Yeah. Right? yeah. Women great. taking over. Everybody loves that. It's about right? time. <laughs> <laughs> It's about but time. it's, you know, I'm just, uh, I like to mention that because it's not a new thing, a newer thing, the same thing in wines, right? Uh, we see a lot of it in wine now, yeah. which is fantastic. Um, but I was going to also ask you, uh, because you mentioned the, um, the scotch, the difference with the scotch. Tell us what's a little. What's the difference? What is a whiskey? And, what, and we already know what's bourbon, but why would you call it? Why is it scotch called scotch? For whoever doesn't know. So well, so we already covered that uh, whiskey is a general term, general term. right? And mm -hmm. So it's all things whiskey. You, Everything's whiskey, and, right? And whiskey, mm -hmm. uh, as a general term, you can make whiskey anywhere, right? Uh, with few regulations, other than um, the mash bill. Like you can't just make whiskey out of anything. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be 51% corn, you know, but it needs to be grain. You can't right. just <clears throat> make it out of whatever you want, you know. You um, can call it if you make it, but it doesn't mean it is, right? That, yes, like true. the conversation you, we have. Yes, you, you, yeah. you, can, you can call anything right. anything you want. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't mean it's true. Right. Um, <clears throat> but um, when you talk about scotch, one of the things uh, that it needs to be is made in Scotland. You, if you go anywhere in the world and they and you find a bottle of scotch and it says made somewhere other than Scotland, that's a lie. Right. <laughs> that's the only <laughs> way it can be scotch <laughs> is if it's made in Scotland. <laughs> the same with bourbon. Same with bourbon. Right. Right. Same, same with bourbon, yeah. Um, scotch is uh, slightly different in the regulations um, as far as they're a little more uh, lenient. Right. Um, th so the the mash bill is generally different. It's usually rye. It's mainly rye, um, and a lot of times it's just two different types of barley: mm -hmm. uh, plain barley and malted barley. Right. Um, <clears throat> that's not to say that some people don't make it with other things, um, but uh, but that's usually what you see, um, and. Generally, the way they uh, when you when you malt barley is germinating it. So basically, you you have to get it wet in order for it to germinate. But then before you start the uh, the process of um, the mash, you have to dry it to stop that process. So what they do is they heat it. And it's this basically the same process as any other whiskey, but in Scotland, they use peat. And peat is um, a specific, uh, it's, it's like a mossy grass that grows in this uh, thick mud. And it's, so they cut these pieces out and dry it up and use it for the fire. And that's where all this smokiness oh, the comes yeah. from because they're, they're, they're drying it directly over this peat fire and it has a specific type of smoke, you know. So then, so then in the process of making the, the mash and everything, that's imparted into the alcohol, which then is even amplified even more by the char in whatever barrels it's being aged in. And 
that you can taste the smokiness, the uh, the delicious barbecue flavors, mm, which yeah. we brought me to. I was looking at Eric because I'm thinking about. Uh, in case you don't know, uh, Eric is also a barbecue master. So is Chris. They the perfect ones to 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 talk about pairing, uh, whiskey and food. Speaking of the peat, it's yeah. probably why I'm not a big scotch drinker. Mm-hmm. The smokiness is a little too much for me. Sure, yeah. But I found that in other in other liquors as well. Mezcal. Mm-hmm. Mezcal is just a little too smoky for yeah. me and it's because of the roasting of the agave. Yeah, it's a, s- a similar process uh, which is where that smokiness comes from. I prefer the, the, the more mellow the more mellow flavors that you get out of just the, the charred barrel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and those, those flavors, uh, you know, they're generally like a, the vanilla stuff coming through and you the know, caramels, the, the caramel flavors, uh, which you get out, which you get in uh, the scotch as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe slightly less because they're using used barrels as opposed to bourbon, which has to be new charred barrels. Right. Um, and that's that's interesting because that's where a lot of the um, bourbon barrels go. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's. Um, Irish whiskey so also. That's something that happened, uh, you know, over over time because they've always used, previously used barrels, but, it, you know, eventually, you know, over, you know, so many hundreds of years, they've found that they like to use, at least on their initial uh, um, aging, they like to use previously used uh, bourbon barrels. They never use brand new barrels. It's always used barrels. Um, but sometimes they'll use sherry casks. I was just going to say, sometimes they'll use uh, wine barrels. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, um, it, and it, it makes it delicious, yeah. Yeah, and then some people go a step further, and they'll start with a, a bourbon barrel, and they'll end with a, a sherry barrel, and that changes the flavor profiles even more. And then blend it. Yeah. Someone was aging in, and this wasn't scotch, this was whiskey of some variety, was aging in maple... Mike. Syrup barrels. Yes, yep. I read mm-hmm. maple syrup barrels. Oh, that must be delicious. I haven't Does tried. I haven't tried it yet. Ah, oh, that's gonna be delicious. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but I want to try it. I want to yes. find that. I want whiskey um, aged in the maple syrup. And barrel. you know what's you know what's funny? Um, the uh, uh, the food industry has gone, you know, paired with that. Right. Um, and I've seen uh, maple syrups that have been aged in bourbon barrels. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. There we go. And, How delicious. And something else that I saw, I saw somebody got together with um, a, a bourbon uh, company, somebody in San Francisco, where they make uh, soy sauce. Oh. oh. And they have aged soy sauce in the bourbon barrel. Well, that's That's going to be the... Oh, we're going to... I'm that, getting hungry. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Haisa likes to use a maple syrup in the whiskey, right? Oh, that's a oh, great combination, yeah. right? Yeah. She it's makes delicious. a fantastic old-fashioned. Oh, I bet. Fantastic. I bet. Yeah. Uh, you like to make old-fashioned with maple syrup. Yeah. I like to mix uh, maple syrup with different things. I've, it, it, maple syrup is great with bourbon. It's, I've had it with cachaça. It's mm, great like that, you know. And, um, um, go ahead. So, no. In general. It's In deli- general. Yes. It's a delicious flavor. Mm-hmm. You know? And how uh, we talk about cachaça... Um, do you know a lot about cachaça? Do you have you tried it? Like, what would be in your mind? How does cachaça? What's similar in cachaça there uh, with whiskey? Well, cachaça has a natural sweetness, right? Uh, because it's uh, it's basically a, a rum, uh, not the same exact process as mm-hmm. typical like Caribbean rum and stuff. But you're starting with uh, sugar, sugar cane. Cachaça starting with the the fresh juice right. of the sugar cane, so you're getting a lot of natural sweetness right. from that. Um, and so, it's the same similar aging. And, and it's yeah. it's a similar aging process. Mm-hmm. A lot of cachaças are aged uh, in, in like lighter barrels. They're not. They don't. Uh, the barrels don't impart as much of a, a charred. Uh, as bourbon, you know, color oh, or flavor or anything. Um, but some of them do. I've had cachaças that have been aged uh, a lot further and in, uh, I believe, in uh, more charred barrels that have a lot of similar notes to uh, bourbon and whiskey. 
and they they were delicious too. And you know, I, I mix a little bit today. I know we're drinking uh, bourbon, but I brought out some typical Brazilian appetizers mm -hmm. because it's the same, right? Like oh, yeah. it pairs well with the whiskey. And yeah, yeah. This, same as it does with cachaça. This particular whiskey has a nice spiciness to it. This bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't seen the mash bill, but our assumption is that there's some rye in here, which would bring out that spiciness. I think it pairs really nicely with the sausage. Yeah. Linguisa. Yeah. Yes, linguisa. The linguisa. And the delicious... Uh, Torresmo. Uh-huh. <laughs> Comanjoc. Comanjoc. Um, but that, that's actually um, a, a, a another similarity. Um if you want to talk about similarities between uh, certain cachaças and uh, bourbon or whiskeys, um, generally when we uh, think of bourbon, uh, we think of like barbecue, right? Right. Um, and in a lot of ways, American barbecue is very similar to Brazilian barbecue. Um, a lot of the same uh, cuts of meat are used. Um, some of the cooking methods are different. Um, I know Brazilian barbecue is a lot less seasoned. It's mainly salt and a couple other seasonings, and some garlic maybe, you know, um, and roasted over open flame, you know. Um, a few things better than an open flame to bring out the natural flavor of meat. Mm. Yep, yep. And then American Again, barbecue. Again, hungry. You make me hungry. American barbecue <laughs> sometimes tends to have a heavier seasoning as far as the spices go. And a lot of times it will be smoked for a long period of time. That's where it differs mostly is the, the smoke that we put into the barbecue as opposed to the light smoke that you get from just the open flame with Brazilian barbecue. But it's all very similar. So we have sausage in our barbecue. You guys have sausage in your barbecue. You know, all these things. Um, I think it's just the large, the real large cuts of protein in which we separate Mm -hmm. Style wise, yeah. If you think about how a how a hog is barbecued here and how a hog is treated in in, in other places around the world, that's often split and flayed and cooked faster on uh, roasted faster on a higher right. heat. Mm -hmm. um, even when it's even when it's barbecue, yeah. You know, whereas we tend to go with the real slow, low, laborious. Everything yeah. is just going to fall apart and become a pulled pork sandwich when you're done. But um, it's so delicious. It's so delicious. It's so delicious. Whereas I'll take a slice of, I'll take a medium slice of picanha any day over a slice of brisket, and somebody might want to kill me for that because I make a pretty good brisket. But oh, fantastic I, brisket. Picanha would be my would be my choice of of the two. Actually, and, you should try. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say they both have their place, and I'm. I, I you would, have both. I would love to have both of them on my plate <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> their places side by side on your plate yeah. with a glass of whiskey. Actually, you, sh you should actually. Uh, I will invite you over again so we can talk about all the delicious barbecue things that you guys do, because it is pretty fantastic. I have tried myself many occasions and I think it should be shared because it's amazing mm. especially um, and you all also uh, try a lot um, do you use whiskey a lot in your cooking? Uh, I like to use it sometimes in uh, sauces I know um, you do right? I do whenever possible I mean I, I whenever possible that sounds like I'm doing it all the time but when where I think it makes sense, where I think it's going to enhance a, a, a dish, whether it be in a, a, a marinade or a, a pan sauce or, or in a barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I think it definitely has its place, absolutely. But I, how I'm, could it be? How could it go wrong? Right. Well, I I know. Know. Good whiskey, could, yeah. good food, barbecue. Yeah. How could it go wrong? No, I think it's I think it's wonderful. Um, even desserts. You can oh. mix whiskey into desserts. You I mean, have to say, dessert know. is one of my favorite times to have a little bit of whiskey. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like a little bit of whiskey alongside a cup of coffee. I mean, we we mentioned Irish coffee earlier, but I think you know whiskey, bourbon, probably even scotch works well yeah. alongside uh, alongside a cup of coffee. Um, anything about the pairings that whiskey often goes well with citrus, you know, like oranges. You think about a, 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 an old fashioned or you know, some of the mixed drinks. Mm -hmm. um, chocolate. Works well with chocolate. Yeah. Really does. Whiskey whiskey and chocolate is delicious. So mm -hmm. find me a recipe where I can incorporate whiskey and chocolate. 
I'll give you something. A nice fudgy, I'll give you something to eat. A nice fudgy brownie or a chocolate lava cake. But I've mm-hmm. I've even uh, tried it myself with just you know bits of chocolate, and it it works really well. I like the the glazed bacon, um, a oh. sweet bacon dessert, a chocolate bacon thing combined. Mm-hmm. What is it again? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, with glazed with Can- whiskey, uh, whiskey candied bacon. Oh There's my God. probably bourbon candied bacon or whiskey candied bacon yes. coated in chocolate. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh that my sounds, goodness. That sounds. If you haven't delicious. tried that yet, look for it. Look for the recipe. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's, oh man. <laughs> I actually tried yeah. to get some for us today, but it was early. Right. Uh, the husband's always good. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's one I, of my favorites. Yeah, I thought I was like, well, I we have an Irish background, background, two American boys. What's better than some Brazilianess? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had, you know, I had to do it. <laughs> I had to do you it. You got to mix it up. You got to mix it up. Absolutely. You can't be all all just American or all Brazilian. It's you mix it you up. Know, that's what, and I say that all the time. The flavor is always in the mix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything mix it's better. The you know my spices. The same thing with people. The more you blend them, the better they look. Yeah. It's been <laughs> that's true. It's it's fantastic. So it's whiskey. So it's um, food. You know. Yeah. And talking about back about whiskey, mm-hmm. uh, we talk about Scotland, we talk about bourbon, we talk. Uh, how about what's going on in Japan? I know that it's a <coughs> big uh, Japan now is a, owns a big whiskey house in the United States. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I believe it's Jim Beam. Um, Jim Beam was bought out by Suntory uh, Distillers. It's Beam Suntory. Um, <coughs> yeah, Beam Suntory. Beam Suntory right? now. Mm-hmm. Um, and powerhouse, a, again, a powerhouse. Again, um, just like you saw with uh, baseball, the Japanese saw something they liked, and they said, "I'm going to make that, <laughs> and I'm going to make it as good as it can be made." You know, I'm going to do that. You know, and they did the same thing with whiskey. Um, and the Japanese generally tend to uh, like Scotch style whiskey, so most of the whiskeys coming out of Japan are Scotch style. Um, but I think there might be some that are more general whiskey, American whiskey style, you know, uh, some some lightly um, aged. And uh, you know. uh, some of the biggest names of the bourbon in America. I mean, some of the, re- <laughs> of course, in America, some yeah. of the biggest names of the bourbons uh, are now owned by Suntory. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. that's a pretty okay. good point. Yeah. Again, J- Jim Beam and Jim Beam... Um, uh, there are generally a number of uh, well-known whiskey brands under one specific, like, main brand that is the most well-known. So, mm-hmm. like, Jim Beam would be one of the most well-known in the world. Obviously, that's why the Suntory bought, bought them. Bought it, yeah. Right? Um, <clears throat> so, under Jim Beam, um, off the top of my head, I can't think of the specific uh, brands, but there are other brands under the Jim Beam name that aren't there. It's not Jim Beam, whatever. It's a specific brand yeah. of whiskey. Yeah, I think Old that, Forest or uh, yeah, Brenton's, yeah. um, um, Pappy. Um, I'm not again. I'm not positive off the top of my head mm-hmm. right now, um, but yes, the, they're like some of those famous. Yeah. Some famous names are basically made by the Jim Beam Eagle Rare Corporation. Um, yeah, that's um, a lot. Okay. Yeah, so now they're made by Suntory, you know, just in, in the... Seems to be common in the whiskey business. Yeah. That, that one house has yeah. a number of the the, the better-selling whiskeys on the market or the better-known whiskeys on the mm-hmm. market. Again, talking about <clears throat> generations, right? right. Because yeah. somebody back then started this distillery yeah. and their grandfather did it and then their great-grandfather did it right. and they kept passing along and now yeah. it became... They came up with a fantastic recipe, so it just keep adding to it. They're gonna air a different uh, um, barrel to it. They're gonna blend yeah. differently. Right. This distiller now, this master, this, uh, what is it called? The master blender. Um, now he will come and come up with his own recipe, and then just keep yeah. adding, and just keep making magic. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I know one of my one of my favorite um, distillers is uh, Heaven Hill. Uh, because they make from the, the basic, you know, I actually prefer, as a, as a mixer, a go-to whiskey, I prefer a Heaven Hill. I can buy a bottle of real bourbon for $10, you 
and mix it with whatever I want to mix it with and have a good drink, right? I don't even always mix it. Uh, right? It's, that, it's good it's enough. It's good enough to drink. It's good enough to drink, enough to drink it straight like it if, you, if you want to. Which brings it to a good point. Like I, um, same, similar things I hear with wine. A lot of people don't buy wine or don't order wine because they're not sure. They think like if they go to the liquor store to buy, to choose a wine, they might not, they might not be sure about what to buy, but they think it have to be expensive. They're buying something for somebody and they think, oh, I, I always get questions. Oh, Lou, should I buy this? I say, okay, how much you want to spend? Oh, some, you know, it's got to be at least $50 because otherwise it's going to be bad. I said, no, you can find fantastic wines for a very affordable price. Mm -hmm. The same, and even more now with California, we made everything more accessible. Same thing with whiskey, yeah, right? You true. don't have to spend uh, uh, hundreds of dollars to get a good bottle of whiskey. Yeah, and and just like uh, a lot of winemakers, the, um, each uh, distiller is generally putting out different levels of their whiskeys. Right, that's where a lot of these different names uh, come from. Um, like I said, Heaven Hill, the ba their basic uh, ten dollar bottle is just Heaven Hill, right? Heaven Hill bourbon. They they have one called Quality it's, House. Yeah, the Quality not. House, and I've only seen the Quality House in a one liter. I've no, they have. have you they seen have the Quality it, House yeah, in different in sizes? Okay, uh, but the black one now is still just Heaven, Heaven Hill. Hill. Uh, but there are many uh, different levels from Heaven Hill Distillers with different names. Um, and again, they could range up to thousands of dollars a bottle. Evan Williams? And, um, I, think I think Evan Williams is one. And that's probably Evan why Williams it's such a it. similar looking bottle. Um, but uh, so you have, like you mentioned, uh, Pappy Van Winkle. Uh -huh. it's, a rare, uh, it's a rare bourbon. Um, and even in Pappy Van Winkle, there's different levels, right. there's different, you know, uh, uh, aging years. Right. And, you know, so um, and that determines on that determines what the price is going to be. Um, but right. also the Stuffy. rarity, yes. uh, the, you know, the, it doesn't come out of the out of the, you know, um, the warehouse expensive. Yeah. But then it's just so man, so many to the, go around. <laughs> the, uh, the MSRP on a, a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle may be. Five hundred dollars. Wow, five hundred dollars. Uh, you know, but you're and not cheaper gonna, but, even. But you're not going to be able to find it for under under <laughs> like two hundred like sometimes. A thousand, yeah. two thousand dollars, right? If you can get it, you um, you can't even get it. If that's sometimes. even the price, I'm just throwing a yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just throwing a higher I'm price. I have out to there. find a way to sample some of that. You know, because because um, I know what a sixty five dollar bottle of bourbon tastes like, mm -hmm. or a seventy dollar mm -hmm. bottle of bourbon tastes like, and I'm hard pressed to find. A way that it could be better. Yeah. Um, but it's not always better, though. It's like, not right. always It's better. just expensive. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's not always better. But it's, it's, it's not necessarily better yeah. because it's sometimes it's it been there too long. Also. I recently had it could, some. Yeah, it could it could have lost some of its uh, quality depending on how old uh -huh. it is. But how it's stored. I recently yeah. had some Jefferson's Ocean Voyage. Um, this was a weeded a, a weeded batch. When they tell you that you will taste vanilla. Mm -hmm. And they tell you you will taste the caramel and the spices. They're not kidding. Um, that was a that was a delicious yeah, bottle yeah. of bourbon. I will so what, <laughs> I will the, tell you. Why is it called ocean? So it's ocean aged voyage? on a ship. It's aged while traveling around the world, essentially in the ocean. And the idea is that the combination of the rocking and then the barometric pressure changes that happen it's um, speed up the speed up the aging process so that a bottle that's so that a cask that's been on a ship for two years it's like it's been aged for six or yeah. eight or something yeah. like that and i'm sure it's going to do wonders for the transferring um the flavors of the oak Absolutely. because it's constantly constantly um what is the call the word i'm looking for mm. the uh <laughs> so funny <laughs> I'm not certain. <laughs> the friction. Um, oh, the movement. Oh, the the yeah, movement, yeah. yeah. yeah the the motion. constant motion of yes. the ocean. Uh, Certainly. <laughs> and that actually, that actually reminds me of, of something. Um, one of the differences between, say, scotch and bourbon, um, well, most bourbon anyway, because now bourbon can be made anywhere in the United States, but most bourbon is made in a climate 
in an area where you have these temperature changes right. over over the course of a year that make the uh, alcohol expand and contract right. more in and out of the wood as opposed to scotch, which has a steadier climate in Scotland right. where it's being made so that it doesn't get all the same. It, so in, or, in order to get the same qualities as you can get in a bourbon, scotch has to age even longer because the bourbon is constantly, right. the, the process is much faster. Um, so that's another difference between uh, scotch and, and bourbon or American whiskey. What about, um, I know, um, what's your background, like your heritage? Oh, um, we're Irish. We, we have a, a lot of things, but Irish is one of them. Um, that's probably where our love of whiskey starts. Uh, I was going to ask, because there's a lot of famous Irish whiskeys out there. Mm -hmm. You talk about Irish coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's... Uh, a common item? Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And, I mean, when I was a kid, I'd see a lot of old bush mills around the house. Um, a lot of old bush mills. At the holiday right. season. Not that right. there old bush mills around the house all the time. Just everywhere. Um, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Put it on my cereal. We're drinking for breakfast. <laughs> I, I myself have migrated over to Jameson for my, for, for my Irish whiskey. Um, but Irish whiskeys are, Irish whiskeys are absolutely delicious. Um, like American whiskeys, you have a range. You have a range from sweet to spicy. Um, yeah. Irish whiskeys have a have an interesting background in the, their aging process. Uh, Irish whiskeys, again, um, I'm not. I don't think there's a, a specific uh, mash bill on the Irish whiskeys as far a, as, as far as like bourbon. They give them a bigger but, room. Mm -hmm. But some of them, like Jameson, have a high corn. Uh, percentage in their mash bill, and that's why it's delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is, so that's why Jameson is is fairly sweet, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot softer. Um, that goes to the uh, uh, process of aging it in used bourbon barrels. So the bourbon barrels, uh, the bourbon has extracted a lot of the harshness of the char. So by the time it gets to the Jameson, it's unable to extract all that harshness, so it's like a much more mellow uh, flavor. Yeah, right? I've been to I've been to the Jameson house, and oh. well, I got to I had the terrible task of sampling all the different uh, Jameson bottles, and that was horrible, uh, horrendous, I, fantastic, just fantastic. <laughs> And then you get to see, you know, the different notes and the story behind. It was pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's uh, that's one of my go-to uh, whiskeys, actually. Especially, I would say, if, if you uh, want to introduce somebody to whiskey, that's a, a whiskey point. like a Jameson. Uh, and it's a nice some, start. Some other, because uh, like I was saying, that, uh, that one specifically is, that, is that mash bill and that flavor profile. Not all of them. Some of them are like bush mills. I always found to be a little, uh, almost smokier. Yes. Almost like scotch. Bush mills smoke. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Absolutely. So the, you know, depending on who's making it, you know, and again, Irish whiskey. It's Irish because it's from Ireland. And that's all. That's make, it. That's the only <laughs> way it can be Irish whiskey. That's it. Is if it's made in Ireland, but the, there's no specific regulation on that mash bill and like you know, it is like in so. bourbon. And, yeah. And, yeah, and I agree. If you wanted to introduce someone to whiskey who was, who's not a whiskey drinker and you wanted to start them off with something, a Jameson is a good choice. Um, Jameson Black is a really is, mm -hmm. is a really mellow, smooth whiskey. Um, I've had people who aren't whiskey drinkers drink that without issue. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it delicious. Is delicious. Yeah. It's really good. It's, um, it's great for Irish whiskey. Uh, our oh, Irish, Irish coffee. coffee sure, sure. So tell us a little bit about Irish coffee that we hear so much today. Oh, for that's... for our viewers that uh, never heard of it, never had one, what's it all about? Well, it's one of the greatest things ever invented. <laughs> Of it, mixes, and, it mixes whiskey and coffee. I don't know how it could be bad. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, and sugar. As, uh, knowing that uh, Brazilians are a very coffee-centric uh, culture. Yes, we are. I think that more Brazilians who are willing to drink alcohol should try 
a properly made Irish coffee, and I think that they would fall in love with it. I think so too. Right? I love it. So what's in what's in the Irish coffee? It's black coffee, brown sugar, Irish whiskey, and then it's topped with whipped cream, and it should be beaten until it's not quite stiff. It should be have a little bit of have a little bit of softness like liquid, to it. You know, very thick liquid, so that it can be poured or ladled, or kind of yeah. you know either poured or ladled out on top of the cup. It yeah, I know, I know your. Your father makes a fantastic one. Mm, I yes, he does. Yes. Right? Yes, he does. Sometimes it, I have to tell him more whiskey, you know, <laughs> but he, he, they're very good. <laughs> Growing up in the house in, in a house with a bartender is a, is always a good thing. Yes, that mm-hmm. that was actually uh, part of, part of it is that our father uh, was a bartender. Um, Isn't that fantastic? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, what could be wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> so he used to make the. Um, he always made do. Um, the Irish coffees for it. Yes. yes. Irish yeah. Irish coffees, uh, Bloody Marys. Oh, he makes excellent From Bloody scratch, Marys also. He makes a wicked Bloody Mary. I got to yeah. bring him over. And mm-hmm. a pina colada. Yep. Oh, God, I pina gotta colada be- from scratch. Uh, uh, pina colada? Yeah. yeah. Delicious. Yep, absolutely. I got to bring him over to the podcast. Oh, yeah. Certainly. Because I'm sure everybody's going to love him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's going to love him. Mm-hmm. I know they will. <laughs> I know I love him. <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay. Um, one more question, sorry. <laughs> I know you can always, you know, everybody now is a big new thing going on. Like everybody's making beer home. We know that a lot of people make whiskey, uh, make wine at home. Can you make whiskey at home? Uh, well... I know it's a loaded. I know it's a loaded question. If you're able, wanna, I'm gonna get in trouble. Can you, you know, make a, a yes? It is if you possible. Have, <laughs> if you have the, the proper ingredients, uh, then you're able to make whiskey. You all, can but, make everything, right? Um, but not really. You are not allowed. <laughs> uh, it is still illegal in the United States uh, federally uh, to distill uh, grain. Basically, grain spirits. To distill I mean, any anything. any spirits really to to distill the process of distilling something, uh, because beer and wine you don't have to distill. Distilling yeah. is the process of concentrating the alcohols. Um, so that that process is still banned in the United States. Um, I'm sure there are places that uh, don't really regulate it so much uh, because you know you have a federal law and then you have a state law so some states may not care what you do right. but it's still illegal federally um, although and, and, right? and in, a state like, in a state like New Jersey <laughs> you can't own the equipment to make to it to make it it's, right? it's, it's against the law to own the equipment yeah. to make it while you can produce I think it's 200 gallons of wine or beer for right. your own home consumption yeah Heck, I have six gallons of Chardonnay going at home right now. And, so. he's, not, and he's not drinking at all, so I don't right. know, 200 gallons, like, <laughs> home consumption. All right. Sure. <laughs> right, exactly. Of course, why not? Wink, wink. Yeah. Uh, Everybody, nobody blinks an eye. No. Uh, but although they don't, it's not allowed, right? But that may or may not have uh, be some people making... Um, mm-hmm. Whiskey, um, what they call what they call it, moonshine. Sure. Moonshine, yeah. Right. There's um, big whole, whole moonshine. television shows right. dedicated to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so, and you know the television shows. I'm sure you know they're not really doing these illegal things. Right. Otherwise, <laughs> they wouldn't be putting it on, on television. Television, right? You know, right. Um, but there, yes. are, there are some regulated moonshine. They call you know they put on the label as moonshine, but it's all legal. Certainly. Yeah, it's yeah. all regulated. It's regulated. So. Technically, Climax Moonshine right. out of Virginia is one of those. Yeah. One of those. Tim it, Smith, he's one of those TV guys. So, but tell uh, tell our viewers what uh, what's Moonshine for anybody that haven't heard of that yet, because it's very uh, it's a common thing for uh, here in America. But if you listen to uh, to our podcast in some other countries, you might not know what it is. Yeah. So, from from what I from what I can tell, Moonshine is is a gen- is a general term like whiskey. Because what you're making it out of is not necessarily what's most important in, in this particular situation. Because um, I've seen, I've heard of moonshine being made from everything from corn to peaches. Fruit. Right, right. Sure. Exactly. Delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Peach exactly. moonshine is delicious. So 
technically, it would seem to me that whis- that that moonshine is just unaged whiskey. Yeah. Um, it, it's you know it's clear, it's white, it's hot, it's in its basically in its pure state um, without having anything else done without having anything else done to it. Um, small batch by nature, um, craft by nature because the people who are making it are each doing it their own way and very mm. and very differently. And everybody makes the best one. Oh right? yeah, sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> and I mean there's a there, there's there, there there's sort of sort of a bit of a romanticism involved in it too, you well, know it's what the I mean? same as, your own Yeah, it's the same as uh, everybody has the best cachaça. Everybody has the best uh, yeah. pimenta, right? Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. pepper. Everybody you go to, every house ah, you go in Brazil, oh, it's the best pimenta you ever had. Mm-hmm. Sure, of course it is. Right. It right. is same as wine. Every yeah. winemaker, every everybody that makes uh, wine at home, mm-hmm. they have the best, and they are delicious. Sure, yeah. and they are delicious. In their own way. Right. Right. Yes, they are right. delicious. Um, Absolutely. But uh, so my understanding to further that would yeah. be the uh, so because like Eric said, uh, he's seen moonshine made from anything you know anything that you can make alcohol out of. Um, the term moonshine would insinuate that it's being done illegally. Right. That's why it's called moonshine. Because if you make moonshine out of the grain, the mash bill that it would take to make bourbon, it can be called whiskey because it's made out of the right grains. It can't right. be called bourbon yet because it hasn't followed the rest of the process. But it's a uh, neutral uh, spirit, you know, made from these grains, this specific mash bill, so you can now call it whiskey, but it's white whiskey. It's not... Right. Know, it's not um, what you recognize as whiskey. Right. Yeah. But every yeah. whiskey come out of the ba- um, goes in the barrel white. Yeah, right? exactly. Most yeah. people don't exactly. might not know that, right? Every, yeah, true. true. All the liquid is always white going in. It comes out uh, caramel. Yeah, so it would be my assumption that the term moonshine, calling something moonshine, basically just means that it's been made illegally. Right, yeah. which to me would mean that anything that's made under regulation and sold on a shelf in a liquor store can't be moonshine. <laughs> True. It's, oh, but it is. It's, and it's, been it's whiskey of some variety. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's white it's white whiskey or it's you know like uh, if it's been made with apples it's unaged apple brandy or you know like right. uh, so yeah. Um. Going back in the beginning, just because I know we didn't hear that, I know Eric say his favorite way of uh, drinking whiskey. What's your favorite way? Did we talk about that? I don't know. Um, I what's, like, your, what's your favorite way to uh, drink whiskey? Again, it depends on which whiskey I'm drinking. Um, this whiskey is good, uh, neat, just like this. Um, I have uh, go-to whiskeys that uh, are very affordable that uh, I, if I just want a drink... I will mix it with Coke, you know, and that that's a great way for me to drink it. I'll, I'll make all kinds of drinks out of it. I'll make old fashions. I'll make, uh, you know. Um, old fashions made a huge comeback. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. drinking old fashioned. Yeah. It's very popular again. Uh, yeah. Bur- bourbon's had a renaissance. Mm-hmm. You know, bourbon has I had was a gonna, renaissance. I was going to just talk about that because before... Uh, Back in the day when I came here, right, we didn't hear much about bourbon at all. It was a, maybe a bottle or two somewhere, but there was not a lot of bourbons in the bars. There was nobody talking about. And then lately, it was just boom. That's all you see, all you hear. And I was going to be even more because the prices uh, for imported whiskey got so high. Oh, yeah. So everybody's going back to, you know, for one, made in America, right. which we all love, but um, also it's... A lot more affordable to get a nice bottle of bourbon than would be for you to get a scotch, um, the same quality scotch sometimes. Um, yeah. And you know, but I was it was um, it was interesting mm-hmm. how it just took over, right? It just took yeah, over yeah. the the market. Okay. Like I, I was just in the liquor store uh, and I looked across the Japanese whiskeys and I noticed there was nothing under like forty fifty dollars. Well, but I can buy this bottle of bourbon here for fifteen, twenty dollars. You know, I don't know how that uh, Japanese whiskey is going to taste. I'd like to try it, right? But do I want to spend fifty dollars on a bottle just to try something and find out I don't like it? Exactly. You know, 
Whereas actually bourbon, because I know how well it's regulated, I can almost certainly pick up a bottle in a certain uh, price range that's much less than $50 and know that it's probably going to be decent, you know? You're not going to be disappointed. Um, you might, yeah. you, you might, you could get different there ones. There might but, be something yeah. better. Uh, but you're not going to be disappointed. Better, but I'm not yeah. going to be disappointed. Right. Uh, On occasion. You know, especially because of the price. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, that was a waste. Right. That was a waste of twenty dollars. No, no, I'll use it. I'll I'll drink it. I'll mix it. Or whatever. The worst thing that happens is the forty dollar bottle of bourbon tastes like your favorite twenty dollar bottle of bourbon. And you're exactly. Just, and you're just yeah. trying to figure out why exactly. you spent the extra twenty dollars. Yeah. But otherwise. But, but like I said, going into it, I know that if it says bourbon, then it, it is going to be uh, this amount of corn, and you know maybe whatever other uh, grains. It's going to be aged this amount of years in this type of barrel, and it's not going to have anything added to it. That's another part of the regulation as far as bourbon goes. You cannot add any coloring or flavor. Scotch, That's interesting, right? Scotch is not regulated like that. So it e might be. Even the best scotch in the world may have some caramel color added, you know, some, some type of flavoring to... Sure. to uh, you know, mellow something out, you know. And that's not to say it's not good whiskey. It's not one of the best whiskeys in the world. It's just... It's still fantastic. Yeah. But a different it's regulation just, like wine. It has added to it. Wine will have the same, you know, yeah. different countries, different regions. Uh, will have all this... I've heard. Insanity. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, cr not insane. I'm going to say some crazy and yeah. wild um, regulations for wine. So yeah. it's not the same, you know. But doesn't mean... The wine made in France with so with this and this regulation, um, it's any uh, we can get the same kind of wine, the same quality of wine, made in California or made in Chile or made yeah. in Brazil. Yeah. You know, but it's just it's just. A, a and some sometimes those things uh, will affect the final flavor slightly, to the point where uh, you would prefer something from California than right. from France, or you would prefer prefer something from France. Than from California, right. you know. Yeah, I have. I like some certain grapes from different for certain areas. Yeah. Right. Um, like I don't like. I like um, the Sauvignon Blancs from New Zealand, for mm -hmm. example, or from mm -hmm. France. Um, not particular. Well, I shouldn't say that because they're not gonna sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you can't cut that out. But it's like the same thing. What I was talking about. Uh, m the scotches um, with the the smokiness from the peat. Um, there are some scotches that I've had that they're not as peated right. as others, so the smoke level is lower, and the flavor profile is great. I loved it, right? Um, there's even American uh, whiskey that is uh, that basically has been peated. I'm not going to say that they used peat, but they they smoked it in, in the process. It's a, right, it has right. a smoky smokiness like scotch um, that I don't like it. I, I you know. But um, the beauty about um, whiskey and wine is that, of course, you always choose your whiskey and you choose your wine. Um, if you're cooking with it, right. you will choose in the one that you drink it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't love drinking it, you can still cook it with it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and that's, that's what that, that, that's what you know. Any good chef will tell you when you're cooking with wine, cook with something that you'll drink. Right. That's right. not to say buy an expensive bottle of wine and pour it and pour it into your you know uh, right. shrimp scampi. You know, like no, uh, but but don't use a wine that you, you wouldn't, wouldn't drink it you, that is so bad that you wouldn't drink it you know because that flavor is going to come through in the in, a, in the food in the food and more than likely you're going to concentrate the flavor by evaporating the wine yeah right so if yeah. it's not good don't cook with it yeah absolutely <laughs> right. there's there's a psa for today if it's not good don't cook with it <laughs> <laughs> but the whiskey the same but you might, might that might be a whiskey that you don't love but you can make a fantastic sauce with it oh sure yeah yeah you can make a glaze with it you could add it to your add it to some to your caramels when you're making stuff like that because oh never mind I could go on forever with stuff like that oh <laughs> well we oh, can do man. a podcast that's only a, on food I would like that that's a completely different podcast I would love that to be honest right yeah, yeah that's 
to be honest, that is one of my favorite things is food that has alcohol incorporated into it, you know. So when, and I'm sure you all will love it too. Mm-hmm. So we're going to make sure we do another podcast only on the Gordman's and uh, the delicious recipes they make. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Thank you for having Again. us. Thank I you for having hope, us. I hope you guys uh, had a good time. Yes, I did. I had a fantastic time. I hope uh, you at home have enjoyed our podcast. In case you didn't know, Chris is also my husband. Yes. <laughs> and Eric is my brother-in-law. So my universe is pretty fantastic, right? As you can see, it's always surrounded by food. It's always surrounded by uh, liquor and wine and whiskey. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yes, wonderful time. Thank you. And you know what to do. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell. I hope you had as much fun as we did. And I'll see you next time on the Lucicast. Bye-bye. That's a wrap.